Moving on, we always love it when we can say only on CBS Mornings, especially when it comes to revealing the latest selection in Oprah's book club. Her new pick is called That My Bird Has My Wings, the autobiography of an innocent man on death row. It's written by Jarvis J. Masters is his name. And more than 20 years ago, Masters was sentenced to death by lethal injection for a crime he was never accused of committing. You heard me right, never accused of committing. Our lead national correspondent, David Begnell, spoke with Oprah about why she picked this book. And then he also interviewed Masters from outside California's San Quentin State Prison. The man who's now the centerpiece pick of Oprah's book club lives deep inside of San Quentin. California's oldest prison. My name is Jarvis Masters. I've been in San Quentin for 35 years. This video of Jarvis J. Masters from 2016 provides a rare look at the place that holds the largest population of death row inmates in the country. Step back away from the cell, please. There's no way to show you more because it's against California law to bring cameras into state prisons to interview a specific prisoner. But inmates may call out. You have a prepaid call from of Jarvis Masters. An inmate at the California State Prison, San Quentin. Hello, Jarvis. Good morning. Hey, is this David? How are you doing? I am well. How are you feeling this morning? Well, you know, I'm nervous, for sure. Yeah. Nervous why? Nervous because I'm talking to CBS. I mean, who does that, you know? Jarvis Masters arrived at San Quentin in 1981 from Long Beach, California. And it was there at the age of six he was first picked up by police because he had run away. He was abandoned by his mother and father. Tell me about this armed robbery that you committed. Which ones? How many were there? There were a bunch of them. I got convicted of maybe 14, 15. Wow. I had ran away from a youth authority. I just needed the money. You've written two books, Finding Freedom? That bird has my wings? Yeah. That bird has my wings is the reason we are talking today. It was picked for Oprah's book club. What was your intention for writing that book? My intention for writing that book was to speak to the kids, people who were at risk. I saw all those faces in that book when I wrote it. More and more, I began feeling like I was telling their story as well as mine. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And it's interesting, Oprah, because when you interview an inmate, you only have about six minutes and then the phone cuts off and they have to call back. Well, you, you, you were able to talk to him and actually hear his voice? Yeah. Wow. Jarvis Masters. Hmm. How did you first hear the name? I was interviewing Pima Chodron, the Buddhist monk spiritual teacher. Pima Chodron wrote the introduction. And she suggested that I read the book. And that was, I think, around 20... 14, over eight years ago. I read the book, loved the book, wanted to choose the book as a book club then, or at least get an interview with him then. I called the then governor of California. I appealed to the entire prison system. My team called. We could not get an interview. Jarvis Masters, now a Buddhist, wrote about his journey from a hardened street kid whose life took an even more terrible turn four years into his 20-year armed robbery sentence. That's when prison guard Howell Dean Birchfield was killed by inmates in a single stab wound to the heart. And though Jarvis Masters was never accused of committing the murder, he was accused of making the device to commit the crime. I was charged with it. I never understood why I was charged for it. Did you have anything to do with making the tool, the instrument that was used to kill him? Absolutely not. No. The record shows at the 1990 court sentencing that the judge said, quote, he was born into hell. He was born for reasons it is almost impossible for me to comprehend. If people don't want children, they shouldn't have them. Apparently, his mother didn't know how to not have them. Mm. And he's now in his 60s. And that statement still sticks with him today. Mm. Wouldn't it stick for somebody saying, not only somebody, but somebody who's sentencing you to death, saying you should have never even been born? I said to him on the call, Jarvis, what happened to you? Wow. And his voice changed, and he said, oh, man. And he took us back to Long Beach. At 12, I was arrested for committing the first crime. And he said, I was a young boy when I walked into the house and I heard that my latest foster mom and stepdad were telling the social worker they were seriously ill and that the boy would have to leave. Mm. And that just 
turn my world upside down even before I got into these other foster homes. Uh, I felt betrayed. One of the things that sparked the fire for me, he talks about, the thing that carried him through life was holding on to the love that people had shared with him, you know, in spite of, you know, his mother being a heroin addict, in spite of all the crazy, violent things that were happening in their house. And, and, and that moment, you believe that no matter what, my mother loves me, no matter how many times you've been abandoned. It's the love that carries you through. So some people will hear this and say, a death row inmate, Oprah's book club. What, mm. What's the intention behind the pick? Mm, you know that's my favorite word. Number one, my intention is to expose the story. Number two, my intention is to let people know that there are a lot of people on death row and a lot of people in prison for whom there has been a miscarriage of justice. I do not believe that the crime that he is on death row for, that he was involved in or committed. Oprah Winfrey has gone so far as to help find a team of defense lawyers that is now led by Michael Williams, an attorney with Kirkland and Ellis, the world's largest law firm. At the time that Jarvis was convicted, the state of California had in their possession a confession by another individual saying that he had committed the crime, not Jarvis. These are three people critically involved in the case. That's right. And it was their testimony that was used to convict Jarvis Masters. Yes. When you have an innocent man on death row, it's not just one person who said something that was wrong. The people who are now saying that Jarvis didn't do it are the key crucial characters who were actually convicted of doing it. Yes, or pleaded to doing it. So the case was built on the words of these people. Exactly. And now their words are changing. Exactly. Now their words wow. have long since changed. Wow. The Jarvis I'm speaking to now sounds like a soft, reflective man. The Jarvis you're telling me about seems scary and intimidating. What changed you? I think what changed me is becoming 23 and now I'm becoming 60. And everything in between that, yes, Buddhism helped me. It really, really exposed the suffering that we all live inside of. Growing up inside the violence here, knowing what violence does to people, it changed you. You have 60 seconds remaining. Part of the reason that his story is so extraordinary is because he has been living in hell for 40 years. You know, people who are on death row, you know, people go crazy, they kill themselves, they become really cynical and bitter and angry, and he did the opposite. David Sheff, an award-winning author who wrote the book The Buddhist on Death Row, says he found evidence that Jarvis Masters has helped people while in prison. So Jarvis embraced this new path of committing himself to trying to alleviate suffering in every way that he could. He stopped at least two people from being stabbed in the yard. You think he's innocent? I'm 100% convinced he's innocent. I've read it all. I believe that if he had had real representation, uh, that he never would have been convicted. Given all the pain you endured as a child, given the decades that you've spent in prison and on death row, has your life been worth it? That's a good question. I'm glad that my mother gave me a chance. I'm glad she gave me a chance. Jarvis Masters' next step to arguing for his exoneration is going to take place in a hearing in federal court on October 27th. The state of California's attorney general's office will have a chance to then counter. But in response to our request for an interview, the state wrote that it refused to answer our questions. I know Oprah's been talking about this story for years. I still don't understand why he is on death row. Still, well, you? It, it, it's fascinating, Gail, in that he's the guy who's on death row, but he was never accused of actually committing the murder. Exactly. And the people who actually were convicted of committing the crime are not on death row. Exactly. That, for starters, is like, wait, right. what? Right. It's very strange. And it's a reminder that, you know, we always talk about guilty without a shadow of doubt. I mean, the shadow over the criminal justice system in general is pretty large at this point. And it's troubling. Look, and he's been trying. He's got a powerhouse defense team now. They're going to go to the federal court system and basically say the state erred. And at the end of the day, if the federal court system decides that his constitutional rights were violated, Jarvis Masters has already served his sentence for armed robbery. Mm -hmm. So if his conviction is thrown out, he essentially a free man? could be released. Wow. That's, well, let's see what happens. No one wants criminals to go free, but at the same time, you don't want innocent people to be serving beyond what they should.
All right, David, thank you very much. That's a great piece. And a great selection for the new Oprah Book Club pick. <laughs>